All right, welcome back to part two of the Space Invader project. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to design your enemies and how to get them to interact with, uh, with the actual game, which is pretty much the most important part about designing a game. Is there a point to it at all, similar to the, um, the car game that you, that you designed earlier? So the first thing we've got to do is design a sprite for our enemy. Now, you could use Adobe Illustrator for this or actually any other editing program, even Photoshop or any tool out there. Um, but, you know, Illustrator is good for it, or you can even use this program here. Now, I'm going to keep it simple to some extent. I'm just going to um, make a round circle. I think if you hold undo that, maybe. Clear everything. Cancel. Clear. Change the fill to red, or let's do... Um, orange. I think if you hold shift, it'll create a perfect circle. Cool. And I'm going to make another circle inside of this that's a different color. So I'm using the up and down arrow keys to move that circle that's in there. Okay. Um, we can even add some other designs on here we wanted to Let's see if I can actually paint this and tell me I can there you go oops don't want that all right so I got my monster here uh, we're well at the same time what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a second sprite while we're at it I'm gonna call this um, boss one right as far as the costumes concern and I'm gonna rename it here as well on the left hand side call it boss one right let's make this sort of like our strong enemy or whatever it happens to be I'm gonna also create a secondary costume and this costume is boss one dash two and this costume well let me take a step back. I'm just going to delete the previous one. What we need to do is right click on this and then click duplicate. And what I'm going to do with this animation is um, this is going to be like the animation where it gets destroyed. So I'm going to select my eraser tool. I'm going to make it a bit bigger and I'm just going to like remove chunks of the actual animation and I'm going to use like a red color with the line tool maybe to illustrate that it's exploded or something. Right. Ooh, too much. Right. So that's, you can be more creative about how you do that, but basically this is going to tell me Later on, this is going to be the action to illustrate that the the character has exploded. And I can create one more. I'm going to duplicate this. And we can even go further. And then at this point, just erase all of the um, character and just leave the red beams and even add a few more in there. Right. Oops. Okay, so now we actually have three animations. But the boss, when it gets hit, and when it ex completely explodes. So I'm going to call it, so now it's called boss one, two, and three. That's fine. That's a good name for all of them. Next, we're also going to create one more character. And this character is our, our basic enemy. Um, again, we'll use a circle to start it off. Well, I guess we can use... We use blue, hold shift to constrain the circle, and I'm going to use yellow and paint a secondary circle inside of it. Okay. All right, and I guess that's this one's going to be our basic enemy. Uh, change the costume name to enemy one, right? And we're also going to change the eye or the information here to enemy one. 
cool. I'm gonna right click on it, duplicate it. This animation is when it gets hit, right? That's the idea, right? Like it gets damaged. Added some red lines. Click red. Right? Add some red lines here and there. And then duplicate it one more time. And this time I'm going to erase the rest. Okay. Select my line tool again and just fill it in with some red speckles in there. Okay. Okay. So we've got our animations for that. At this point, we've got all our character designs set up. And I hope I made the right choice by doing that. I, f I think we, we jumped the gun there a bit, but oh well, we'll figure that out as we go. All right, if we take a look at our rocket ship, you're going to notice that it has all of its features still left arrow, right arrow. Let me double check my notes here. Okay, so we'll start with enemy one. Right now with the with boss one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to events. I'm just gonna right click on it and hide it. So if you right click on an object, you can hide it, you can show it. So I'm just gonna work on enemy one. What I wanna do first is create an event when I click on enemy one or when I click the green flag I want enemy one to make sure it shows up in that costume for one we want it to show up and we want it to switch to costume enemy one right we want it to start with that whenever we press that secondly we want the enemy to spawn in a location so that's under the option motion and the block code for that is um, go to this value here. Now something we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna pick a random value of X. Now on this program it can appear anywhere from negative 240 to positive 240 or 180 to negative 180 in the Y axis. So I want this to be able to go from the full span of the left and right. To do that I need to go to an operator and then operator gives us values that we can input, like addition, and subtraction, multiplication, or even this random operators. So I wanted to pick an a, a random value for the x-axis and also a random value for the y. For the x-axis, I'm going to click negative 240. If you understand your Cartesian coordinates, which is the x and y-axis, this should make sense. If not, and you're still not sure, you know, you can go ahead and ask me. And for the y-axis, the highest value I want it to go is to 180. The lowest value, I don't want it to get too close to the rocket ship. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Negative 180. Right. So now, whenever I start the game, when I'm clicking the yellow flag, the enemy can spawn in any location that it wants to. OK, so that's great. But now, how do we get it to interact with us? What can it do? We want it to first go left and right. That's our basic goal right now. So we're going to set an event again. When clicked, we want it to move in a direction. Okay, Motion, move 10 steps or however many. And we have this option called, if on edge, bounce. If it senses an edge, like on the edge of the screen, it will bounce back and forth. But the problem is, it's not doing anything when we press the green flag. We actually have to put a repeat loop, or rather get a forever loop, in order for that to continually happen. So what this loop is saying, forever, it's going to move 10 steps, right? And if it hits an edge, it will bounce off of that edge. So let's play it now. Okay. So there he goes, it's bouncing off of the edge. Right? And I'm shooting with the space bar to shoot it, but nothing's happening. I'm not getting any anything to happen to it so far. Right? Let's time it. No action happens. So what I want to be able to do is when it gets hit by the beam, I want it to disappear or you know to die essentially, to destroy the enemy. So to do that, we have to apply another event and 
I hope you're kind of getting how this works. So when clicked, I need to set a forever loop. I'm just going to pull that for me. Um, what I need to do is get an if statement going. If sensing, yes, we're going to sense it. If it touches, if if this enemy touches the beam, right? that's why we named it beam, we want a couple of things to happen, right? This might be confusing. We can easily just say hide. So I'm going to say hide. If it touches the beam, hide. But I need to use a forever loop or this will not work. Forever means the computer or the program is constantly monitoring the game. If it doesn't have that loop, this will never, this will never work. It'll only work that one single moment. So let's try the game. And here's a problem already. Let's restart it. Okay, the animation plays. I hit the enemy and it's gone. But what about all the little costumes we made? How do we get that to work? Okay, so we want it to hide at the end. So what we need to do is get the look option. We want it to switch to enemy two, but we want it to wait. We want a motion. If that's a motion, where is it at? No, it's an event or a control. Yes, that's a control. We want it to wait, but we don't want one second. We want like a fraction, so point 0.2. After that, we want to switch to costume 3, and then we're going to do another one. And we might have to adjust the time, point 0.2, and finally hide. Okay. Boom. So let's try it again. If I hit the enemy explodes. Do you see how the animation played out? So that's pretty cool. So there you go. That is the basis of having your character interact with the enemy. And the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at possibly adding another enemy, making your enemy move in more random locations, and also your scoreboard. But before I go, make sure again you save your file if this is the last part that you're working on.